Hi, welcome to this lecture on capacitance and DC circuits. And so you can see the contents of the lecture on the left hand side. So the first section is on capacitor and capacitance. We'll then move on to the effect of capacitors dimensions, electrical field strength, capacitors in series and parallel, and the final uh, main topic is on energy stored in a capacitor. And then finally, we'll move on to the summary. So in terms of the key learning points, after this lecture, you'll be able to understand the basic operation of a capacitor, so effectively to store electric energy. The mathematics behind a capacitor and capacitance, so this racing to the charge stored and the voltage, and the effect of capacitor properties. So, so for example, the area of the plates, um, the distance between the plates and the dielectric on the capacitance. And the effect of the voltage and distance between the plates on the electric field strength. Then finally, the mathematics used to describe the capacitors in series and parallel, and also the mathematics behind the energy stored, uh, the mathematics behind to describe the energy stored in a capacitor. So if we start by looking at capacitor and capacitance in this um, section, the capacitor is typically denoted by this capital C here. And the capacitor consists of two conducting services. So you can see here one, two. And what it's separated by is this insulating layer called a dielectric. This could be air or it could be some semiconductor material or some other material. So we've got two conductive plates and then we have this dielectric um, part in the middle. And you can see here, we're supplying it here with a, effectively a voltage potential difference. What the capacitor is used for is to store electric charge and therefore store electric energy. So it's used effectively to store electric energy. Capacitors, they come in different configurations. So you can see here a range of capacitors. In this video, I'm not going into the, into the direct science of exactly how a capacitor works. But if you want to look at um, electronics a systems approach by Neil Storey, chapter four, section 4.2, and he goes in more detail to explain the effect that goes on board on, on the capacitor. And if you watch the next video on RC circuits, you'll and and then the corresponding um, lectures, you'll see a configuration that looks like this, where we've effectively got a resistor and a capacitor in series. And you can see here, I've told you already that the capacitor effectively charges up. It also can discharge if the power source is um, effectively removed. Um, so charging and, and discharging of capacitors, get used to that because effectively that's the capacitors used to store, like I said, electric energy. So it's used to store electric energy. And um, when you're supplying it with a, for example, a power source, the removal of that power source will, will result in the in the charge discharging and you can see here i've got a digital multi uh, multimeter over the over the capacitor which i'm using to measure the voltage out so again that configuration there typical configuration resistor capacitor circuit explain more in the next lecture so if we start initially by looking at uh, definition of units so for a single conductor the capacitance is denoted c and the definition is as follows. So the charge stored per unit potential difference change, i.e. is one farad, which is equal to one coulomb over one volt. So as I said, the unit is to the farad, denoted capital F. Most capacitors have values rating from this pico farad, which is denoted here, this P and F, which is 10 to the power of minus 12 to microfarads, which is, you can see here the micro, well, the symbol used here, farad, which is 10 to the power of minus six. So now let's look at this mathematically. So for a given capacitor, the charge stored denoted Q, so you would have seen that symbol before, the charge stored is related to the voltage across it. So effectively the charge stored is proportional to the voltage. It's proportional to the voltage with this constant of proportionality known as the capacitance. 
So you can see here now the store, the charge stored is equal to this constant proportionality for the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. Or rearranging this to just make um, the capacitance the subject is just going to be equal to the charge over the voltage or the potential difference. So if we look at an example, what we have here is a 10 microfarad capacitor and it has 10 volts across it. What quantity of charge is stored in it? Okay, so you're probably thinking, well, I've got the capacitor value, I've got the voltage, I want to determine the charge. So what I need to use is equation 3, 2. So the following is effectively given. So the stored charge is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. Capacitance was 10 to the power, 10, it was originally 10 here, 10 microfarads, so it's 10 times 10 to the power of minus 6 which is effectively 10 to the power of minus 5, multiplied by the voltage, which in this case is 10, so 10, and that there gives us the value of 100 microcoulombs, as you can see. So that there is our answer. Nice, simple calculation. So now if we look at the effect of the capacitor's dimensions. So this might be quite obvious. So if we look at the capacitance, this is increased by having larger plates so we have larger plates and also by reducing the distance between those these plates that's going to increase the electric field strength so we look at this mathematically a capacitance of a device is given by the following expression so the capacitance is equal to you can see here a which is effectively the area of the conducting plates and d which is the distance of the plates so again looking at this equation it's quite obvious well if you increase the area okay you're going to increase the capacitance so it's on the top of the equation you reduce the distance and you're going to increase the capacitance it's quite obvious by looking at this equation what we also have here is these two terms here so we've got epsilon subscript um, zero here and epsilon subscript r okay these are here to use to denote the permit of uh, Vivity of free space and epsilon subscript r is the relative per meter vivity. So the values for these in a vacuum, a value is given as follows. So you can see 8.85 um, picofarads per meter. And just to make you aware, this this uh, permivity is effectively the ability of an electric field to per to effectively to spread throughout. So in the case of the of the of, of the vacuum, um, that's the number that's given. And because obviously we're not in va we're not in vacuum conditions, you have kind of this um, epsilon subscript r, which is like a uh, well makes it kind of like a relative um, value. So if it's for example for air, you use a value close to one. And for the like, insulator, so if you decide, you know, between your two plates, I told you, you had this uh, dielect, dielectric material, well, dielect, electric, and for air, value close to one. While as insulators, you'd use a value between two to a thousand or maybe even more. So if we look at a question, the conducting plates of a capacitor are two are 10 times 25 millimeters. So that's the area. No, not the area, so that's the dimensions, and have a separation distance of 0 0.7 micrometers. If the dielectric has a relative permittivity of 100, what will the capacitance of the device be? So what we're effectively going to use is we're going to use equation 3, 4 and just substitute in some numbers. So you can see the equation given here. So we know epsilon 0, because if you remember, it was given up here. Okay, that's always standard the epsilon um, r here so the relative uh, permittivity are of 100 so a value of 100 is used here as you can see then the area here is determined based on obviously the dimensions given so it's going to be because uh, obviously we're in millimeters here now so we need to 10 to the power of minus 3 effectively to move it to meters so it's going to be 10 multiplied by 25 and then obviously multiply by 10 to the minus 3. The distance given is 0 0.7 um, micro 
um, meter. So it's effectively seven times 10 to the power of minus six. So if you put that into your calculator, you should get this um, value here, 31.5 nanofarad. Right, so that there is obviously detailing the effect of the area of the plates and also the distance between the plates and the effect that they're going to have on the on the on the uh, capacitor and in terms of the ability of the capacitance and also the insulator or the material that you choose to use between the two plates. So we look at now at electric field strength. So you're aware of this relationship here. So electric charges of the same polarity repel each other, whilst those of opposite, opposite polarities attract. So when charged particles experience a force as a result of their charge, an electric field exists in that region with the magnitude of the force exerted on the charged particle determined by the electric field strength denoted here capital E. Note that this capital E is in bold because we use capital E for EMF. So we put this in bold to obviously differentiate between the two. So in terms of a formula for this, so it's given by this. So where E capital E bold is the electric field strength and it's equal to the voltage that exists between two points at distance D. This has units volts per meter. So if we look at a example here, so the conducting plates of capacitor have a separation of 10 micrometers. If the potential across the capacitor is 100 volts, okay, so high voltage, what is the electric field strength in the dielectric? Okay, so what's the field strength effectively between the plates? So if we use equation 3.5, we can determine this because obviously what we've been given is the voltage and we've been given the distance. So if we just put 100 over, um, in this case, 10 um, micrometers, which is because 10 micrometers is just 10 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So that's actually 10 to the power of minus 5. The answer is equal to... 10 to the power of 7 volts per meter. You could maybe convert this into um, an alternative um, form in terms of uh, maybe megavolts per meter, but I think this is this is fine in the form it's in. We're now going to look at capacitance in series and parallel. So look at this configuration. You'll notice that we've got effectively capacitors in parallel to begin with. So if we want to determine the effective capacitance of a number of capacitors in parallel, what this is equal to is the sum of their individual capacitance. So remember when we went through resistors, when we had a series or we had a resistors in parallel, you notice that the relationship wasn't necessarily this. When we had a load of resistors in series, the relationship was given similar to this. It's kind of the opposite. So the effective capacitance is effectively just the sum of the number of capacitance in parallel. So we look in an example, what we want to determine is the effective capacitance of the arrangement below, where we've got effectively 10 microfarad, 15 and 20 microfarad. So what we simply do is just sum these up. So it's just 10 plus 15 plus 20. So it's equal to 45 microfarad. Then if we're looking at capacitors in now in series, because we've got this configuration given here. So we've effectively got here, well, in general form, it's, it's C1, C2, C3, C4, Cm. So the effective capacitance of a number of capacitors in parallel is given by this. So one over C, which is our effective capacitance, is equal to one over C1, one over C2, plus all the way up to, well, C1, C2, all the way up to um, C subscript N in the general form. So this is a similar relationship to this equation to when we looked at resistors in parallel. However, you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, the capacitors are now in series. So again, as I said on the previous slide, the relationship's kind of just flipped when we're comparing capacitors to resistors. So what is the effective capacitance of the arrangement given below? So we've got two capacitors, 10 microfarad and 25 microfarad. 
So if we use equation 37, the following is given. So 1 over C, so effective capacitor is 1 over C1, 1 over C2, where C1 is 10 and C2 is 25. I'm just going to ignore the, micro, the 10 to the power of minus 6 for now, which is equal to 35 over 250. All right. Um, because if we, we can make the base 250, so that's going to be 10 over 250. And then to make this 250, it's going to be, um, so that's going to be 10 over, so that means that, that that there is going to be 25 over 250. So 35 over 250, flip the equation, so it's going to be 250 over 35. Determine that, use your calculator. So it means the capacitance is going to be equal to 7.14 microfarad. Good point to note is that the value here should be less than these two original values. Okay, it's a good little check in when you're doing your calculations. So that value there should be less, which it is. You can see 7.14 is obviously less than those two. So you know that you're in the right ballpoint. So what we're now going to explore is the energy stored in a capacitor. So potential energy, denoted capital U, is given by this equation. So the en potential energy stored in a capacitor is equal to the half multiplied by Q, which is electric charge, multiplied by the voltage, which is the which is effectively the potential difference between the two plates. So we recall from equation three three, i.e. the capacitance be equal to the charge over the voltage. If we rearrange this to make voltage the subject to the equation, so the voltage is equal to the charge over the capacitance, and then substitute this into equation 3.8, what we get is this here, where the potential energy charge is equal to the half Q, and then brackets Q over C, which obviously now we've got two Qs here multiply, and it's just going to be Q squared over C. Alternatively, um, we can rearrange equation um, 3, 3, so this equation, to make Q the subject. So it's just going to be Q is equal to the capacitors, so the charge is equal to capacitors, capacitance multiplied by the voltage. And then if we substitute this into equation 3, 8, as we have done here, what we'll end up with is we've got, again, V, V. So we'll end up with half, half of capacitance multiplied by the voltage squared gives us our potential energy that's stored in the capacitor. So you'll notice this squared relationship on the voltage, this really shows the significance of the voltage that you're applying to the capacitance or the, the voltage that's being used within the circuit in terms of the potential energy for that given capacitor. So if we look at an example, what we're going to do is calculate the energy stored in a 10 microfarad capacitor which has which has been charged to 100 when it is charged to 100 volts so if we use equation 310 so that should be obvious to use equation 310 because we have uh, obviously a capacitor of 10 microfarad and we also have a voltage of 100 volts so if we substitute that in so effectively your potential energy is equal to half multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 because 10 microfarad, 10 times 10 to the power of minus 6, is going to give us 10 to the power of minus 5. 100 squared, and the answer that's going to give us is 50 millijoules. So 50 millijoules of energy is stored in this capacitor, given the charge that's applied to it, well, given when it's, when it's char charged to 100 um, volts. So in summary, the basic operation of a capacitor has been detailed, i.e. to store energy. If you want to know more in terms of the, the science and the background of capacitors, have a look at Chapter 4 on Electronics, a systems approach by Neil Storey. Within this lecture, the following mathematics has been detailed. So the capacitance relating to charge stored and voltage. The effect of the capacitor properties, i.e. the area of the two plates, the distance between the two plates and the dielectric on the capacitance. 
the effect of the voltage and the distance between the plates on the electric field strength and the mathematics behind what a, what a, capa capacitor, a set of capacitors um, the mathematics behind a set of capacitors in series and also parallel and just remember that the kind of the form of the equations is kind of the opposite to what you you saw before when you when we looked at resistors and then the potential energy of a capacitor so if you have any questions please feel free to contact me thank you